Okay, I'm super excited again because I have a previous guest back because I didn't get enough. of all the questions that I wanted to ask after we had our last interview. So Jeremiah Pospisil is my guest today. So welcome. I am so glad that you were here. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you so much. It's such an honor to be here. I really appreciate it. I'm looking forward to this. <laughs> Me too. Okay. So for those of you who have not seen the first video, Jeremiah has had not one, not two, but three near-death experiences. And we're going to focus a little bit more on the last near-death experience that he had, where he died in a motorcycle crash, not wearing a helmet, and went to the other side. And if you've missed the full interview, I'm going to link it right here so you guys can check it out. But let's start with what happened in your third near-death experience. So my my third one was, like you said, on a motorcycle. And um ended up driving and, and crashing the motorcycle. And um, I fell off the bike and I remember tumbling in the air. And as I tumbled in the air, I was like, what is going on? This is crazy. And then all of a sudden I blacked out, right? And I don't know what had happened. I didn't know at the time why I blacked out. I just remember being in this black space. And I remember thinking to myself, I was very conscious and very aware of what was happening in that black space, I was aware of myself and aware of what was like happening, but I didn't know what was happening on the outside of the black space, right? If that makes any sense. So I didn't know anything was going on with the accident. I just knew it was in this black space. And I remember being in this black space and then going down this, this dark tunnel, like this, these lights started coming in from all around me and they formed up this tunnel um, that was just full of the most beautiful lights I'd ever seen in my life. And uh, they're, they're, they're images and their lights that I can never describe fully, you know, being in the physical body and trying to represent what's on the spiritual side is nearly impossible. And I know that a lot of NDE ears have a hard time trying to vocalize exactly what they experience in that time, but I'm going to do the best I can, you know. Um, but for me, <clears throat> I remember all these lights forming up to, you know, again, to create a tunnel and each one of these lights were on its very smallest scale was a, a pixel. And the pixel was almost an entire um, event or occurrence that had happened in my life. And the funny thing is a lot, a lot of them were major events. A lot of them were smaller events, um, you know, going to the store, meeting people, um, just small minuscule things that I would never have remembered normally. But I remember seeing them and, and really just thinking, wow, like, I don't, I didn't never remember that spot in my mind, but now I see it. Now I know everything about this spot and what, what had happened in that moment. And um, in those moments, I started putting the pieces together of how there's this almost butterfly effect of our lives and, and how we stroll through this life and this existence. And we, we have this unlimited amount of occurrences in our life and interactions with people and things that we don't really see as being very significant in our lives. But it turns out that those sometimes are some of the most significant occurrences in our life. And although we can't see it from our perspective, we can see it looking back on it, whether it's going to the store and getting into an accident. Maybe that was just an accident for, for a normal person, but for me, now I see it as something that's strongly affecting a change, and whether it was the accident that affected my life, or it affected the person that saw the accident, or it affected the fire department, or it affected the doctors and nurses, whatever it was, there was, there, there was just a, a very deep meaning behind each one of our interactions in this life, and each one of our small moments, and I started to connect those pieces together in this tunnel. You know, so going through this tunnel, I remember being able to look around left, right, up and down and um, not behind me, which is very weird for me. I just thought about that, you know, not too long ago, but I was only able to see ahead of me and I would go through and I'd see these um, different occurrences and put the pieces together. And inside of these pixels, there was um, not just the visual representation of the occurrence but it was also the emotions that uh, occurred within that 
So it was the entirety of the emotions connected inside the pixel. So it wasn't just a feeling of happiness, but it was a feeling of everything that happened in there, in the smallest points. And it's really hard to explain, but every millisecond of our lives, we're doing something differently, we're, we're thinking differently, we're, we're channeling emotions differently. And I was able to kind of go through almost like going through a deck of cards and feel each individual moment of that, um, those feelings. And the more that I went down there, the more I would put from these little moments, I was able to draw upon the entirety of the picture and put the entire picture of my life together and show how it had gotten me here. I had always been stressed out about whether or not I made the right decisions. I dealt with depression and anxiety a lot as a younger, younger child. And, um, you know, but the truth is that every moment of my life, whether it's um, getting on the trolley, whether it's going for a bike ride one day, whether it was going for a long drive along the beach, all of those things had placed me right here. There was nothing else that could have affected me to be right here and nothing could have brought me here other than everything. You know, and seeing that really like brought together an understanding for me that there's no insignificant moments in our life. Every single moment that we have is a very significant process and a very significant event and occurrence in our life. And holding on to the truth of that and seeing the beauty and how beautiful each small occurrence is really has changed my life. So going down, I was putting these pieces together, wondering like, why am I doing this? Where am I? I'm still wondering, like, where am I? I didn't really understand it, but I knew I was in this tunnel seeing my life. And I remember there was this being behind me. And it, it's, it's like when somebody walks up close to you and you know that there's somebody there, you don't have to look behind them. You just know, you know, and it's almost like their energy field is within your energy field and you feel the, the you know, difference in it. And um, it was almost like this thing was following me down or pushing me down the, the tunnel and I got to the end of the tunnel and I remember seeing, you know, blank spaces in this, in this moment and realizing that those spaces were going to be filled with more of my life. And uh, it brought me excitement because I knew that I wasn't going to be gone, but I, you know, I, uh, it was just something to look forward to, I guess it would have been. And uh, at the end of the tunnel, I remember being hit with this immense, powerful light or energy or information. I like to look at it as information and the information just kind of permeated my entire being in that, in that body, the, the spiritual body or the energy body that I was in. And I remember the being behind me tell me to become the purpose, you know, and I never really understood what that was up until that point. And, you know, it, it took me, you know, months afterwards to finally like fully understand and develop what my purpose is or what is the purpose of this existence for, for my own life, you know, and that ended up being, um, being love, com completing the cycle of life, which is love. You know, we, we start from a, a, a spirit before we're born into the baby bodies and we're, we're meant to develop our bodies. We're meant to develop our mind and we're given all of these little instances and occurrences in our life and these small minuscule specs. And the entirety of those creates an awareness where we're supposed to generate a understanding and that understanding creates different frequencies within our body. And those different frequencies stay with us as we elevate our body, because we can't get rid of knowledge. Once you have it, I mean, although I do forget a lot of things, right. But the truth of it is that, you know, my understanding of my awareness will not change. It consist consistently grows. And for me, Growing from being a, a spirit in a baby's body, growing up into an adult man, I still have and retain my spirit, but I know that once I die, I'm going back into that spirit body. So it's like we're in this intermission almost of the spiritual awareness or the spiritual cultivation, I guess you could say. Um, so yeah, so it told me to become the purpose. And um, I, I went through the next few months just kind of reliving my life and thinking about what had happened and thinking, wow, like this is really profound and really life-changing, you know, and I had never done drugs up until this point. I've never done any hallucinogenics or anything, but this was the closest thing that I could compare um, to actually hallucinating or, or being, you know, tripping, I guess you'd say. And uh, it was very, um, very moving to me. And it taught me that I needed to go start meditating maybe and try to start get some information or trying to unlock the information I feel that I was given in that moment, you know, but, um, but that tunnel was 
really just a beautiful place to be. It really was. And, and a lot like, of, how did it feel? How did that feel? Did it have a feeling you can describe? Yeah. So you, you feel, okay. When you think about being in your body, if you close your eyes, right. And you, you picture your, your essence, your body, you can feel the weight of your body almost, right. You can feel the wholeness of it. You can feel how you're kind of weighed down by gravity, right? There, there's a lot of factors that you can really start exploring if you just like focus on your body and focus on what you're doing here. And for me in that moment, I felt, I felt more whole than I do now, right? And I feel like it was, it was that way because my, my energy, which I believe I was an energy being in that moment, my energy is being inhibited by my body, by my physical nature of who I am. My energy has to run through this biological skin and, and my organs and things like that. So there's kind of a constrictedness of it all. Um, but in this moment, I felt that I was free. I felt like I was completely free and weightless, but I still held the structure of the weight of who I am, uh, the, the wholeness, the oneness of, of my energy, you know, and um but it was, it was just the most freeing place because you feel like you can go anywhere. You feel like you can just fly anywhere or, or float anywhere, whatever you want to call it. But it was just the most beautiful, freeing feeling. But you feel the wholeness of, of who you are, you know. So I, it, it's a place that I long to go to, but I don't, you know, because I know what it's going to take to get there. But it gives me a lot of peace knowing that, you know, once we do transition out of this physical life, you know, in physical form, we do go into that place again. You know, so it was, it was really a magnificent place to be and exist. Wow. Okay. So can we go into the tunnel? So you're in a tunnel and you're seeing the lights and all of a sudden you start to see all these pixels, right? If you could say a number, how many pixels do you think were surrounding you? There, there were uh, almost an innumerable amount it was almost too much to count. Um, you know, like when you look at your LCD TV screen, you know, you can't see the individual pixels, but if you go up really close, you can, and you realize how many pixels are on there. I mean, it's just an innumerable amount. It just kept going. It was, they were, it was like a giant screen all around me, basically, you know, it's just these individual pictures. I, I can't even count the amount and how many there were. There's just a, million maybe i mean billion i i have i have no idea once it get past like two thousand i'm just like two billion three billion <laughs> i love I, it <laughs> who knows? okay so you see a pixel mm -hmm. what happens when you put your attention on one on one of them what happens yes. to you? so um you know again i could look at all of them i could look at each individual one but as i looked at each individual one i remember it, it almost like blew up in my face like it, it came out of where it was stationed at where it was placed at and um just really almost enveloped me it was almost like i was transported back into that picture or into that ex experience right so it would go from the tunnel the edge of the tunnel and just kind of envelop me and just kind of consume me into it and i was inside of this this um this environment you know and i was able to just kind of watch and see what was happening almost from like were a you yourself person. again or were you almost the outsider i was an outsider i was an outsider but i could never see myself so i was looking at it from an outside perspective but i only saw like like uh, through your eyes yeah like, like what your like, eyes would have seen yeah, in that moment yeah. Yeah, almost like through my eyes, but I didn't feel that I was myself there, right? I just felt like I was an observer, but I was looking at it through my eyes and I was able to just kind of feel the emotions of what I was going through, but I also felt the emotions of other people. I felt the emotions of how they were experiencing it or how they may have interpreted it or what it was doing to their emotions, you know, and I Can could Can you give feel... an example like of like of one, like pick something that was that felt good to you and an example of like a moment and how you felt it from all of the angles. Yeah. So, I mean, there were some as simple as walking into a convenience store and saying hi to, to somebody, you know, and I remember how small it seemed to me, but how much it impacted somebody. In what know? way? In what way? I could feel the goodness or my energy being transferred to them. I could feel transferred to them. So yes. we are on earth having these interactions with people. 
I always think it's an energy exchange. We are actually truly we like really exchanging energy. Yeah. That, that's how I saw it. I saw it as we are literally, we are intaking the information and we're taking information that's attached to energy. Right. And that energy is being received by us. We have receptors all over our body. I mean, the way that we feel things, the way that we smell, the way that we see and hear that's intaking information that's intaking energy. Right. So that's exactly what we're doing. Not only that, but our heart protrudes um, electromagnetic energy. Right. And so does our brain actually all of our body does. Right. We have this aura around us um, or our presence around us and, and they can actually measure that, you know? And um, so I noticed that not only were they being um, changed by the energy in person, but also being changed by the words. It was almost like a, a caveat of the, the presence, right? Speaking to them or shaking their hand or saying, hello, what you're doing is you're compounding the energy that you're giving to them and you're changing them by, by doing that. You know, we look at it as just an occurrence or something, but it's not, it's so much deeper. We're changing the vibrational functions of our bodies and giving it to other people, you know? So it, it's really beautiful. And then were you also, cause you said you, you were able to understand the ripple effect. And I don't know if that just meant just on your life, but in that interaction, like your convenience store example, right. could you see a ripple effect of how that energy changed something after yeah. you had that exchange? Yeah, it was, it was almost, I can't say that I saw the entirety of how it affected but I felt the shift. I felt the shift in that one life or that moment and how it affected them and how it shifted them or how their perception would have been acknowledged through that. Um, I saw how that one moment has deviated now their course of, of an experience and, and their course of their life through that one small minuscule moment. And I realized that, you know, that happens on a daily basis. Not only that, but it happens on a, on a, a millisecond basis. It happens every moment of our lives where we're shifting and we're doing things that are changing. We're, we're going up to somebody in our house and saying, hey, would you mind doing the dishes? And that sounds like just a simple thing, right? But that is now deviating their course and what they're doing and their mindset in their life, right? We're, so we're shifting, we're constantly shifting people's energies, right? We're constantly building upon or tearing down or, or deviating the course of someone else's life. And that's, that's all we're doing all the time. You know, we're just collecting information and we're giving out information. We're collecting energy, we're giving out energy, you know, and we're using that energy to kind of create our reality. I mean, that's really what we're doing, but it does every, every, every occurrence, every interaction, whether it's going down the street, driving, it doesn't matter. It's, it's all part of the, the road that we're going down. And that road is not, we're not going down that road alone. We're going down that road with billions of people, you know, billions of people all over the world. So if you are having that interaction and that energy exchange with them, what happens when we have an energy and we feel some way about somebody like, well, let's say that we say we feel negatively about somebody, but sure. yet we mask, we're good. Like we're good actors. Right. And right. we encounter somebody that we're not particularly fond of. And we're like, Oh, Hey, how are you? And we act all nice, but it's an energy exchange. Right. So could you, did you have any time where you saw any moments in your life where you were masking something and could feel like that they didn't, feel the genuineness of, because yeah. they could feel your energy. Could you, did you have any of those examples? Here, here's the truth of my life, right? The first part of my life before my NDE, I was faking everything. everything <laughs> really? Er, listen, here's the truth. Everything was, was a farce, right? And I realize that now because everything that I was doing was trying to sustain a life on this physical world, right? Okay. So it was, like almost it was, self-preservation? It was self-preservation. Right. Mm -hmm. It was the decision to go to work. Right. And go to work so I can create this life that I thought I love. But ultimately, this life that I love is only in this physical world. Right. And this is this is meaningless, honestly. I mean, it's not mean, meaningless completely, but it is somewhat meaningless. We, we so anyway, I live my life. Right. For we'll come back to that. I'm going to, I'm coming back to that later, but yeah. yeah. So I'm living my life for this. I was living my life for this physical world, you know, and I had to, I, I told people I used to be like a chameleon where I could fit into every situation because I would have to shift and change who I was, you know, and I could make them feel comfortable, but I wasn't making myself feel comfortable. 
you know, and I was always constantly worried about people's interpretation of who I was, whether or not they felt I was genuine, which was ironic because I wasn't being completely genuine with them. Right. I was like, wait a minute, something's going on here. Um, but after my NDE and I, and this is, I did see this in, in the tunnel, right? You did or did not. I did. I did. Absolutely. I saw the, the, um, disingenuine nature of, of my words, of my actions, how I was constantly looking for affirmation for my own life because I didn't feel my own power. I didn't feel my own genuine, uh, genuine spirit living in me. And so that's one thing that really shifted after the NDE was I decided to become completely genuine to my spirit and no longer genuine to my body. So you know? what does that mean? What did that mean for you? For me, it meant living life in a very weird way. <laughs> like, okay, I, I live so weird now. It's it's, it's crazy. <laughs> you mean yeah. weird because it's? Do you feel like it's different than what ever, most yes. people are doing it? Yes. Yeah. I am. Okay. So, all of this, my weirdness comes from living in the spirit, right? Everybody around for the most part not everybody there's a lot of people that are living from their spiritual nature but a lot of people live from their bodies and they're they're living in their bodies and they're looking for the spiritual connection right and i i really fully understand and fully live in the moment that i am a spirit basically trapped in a body i guess you'd say almost imprisoned in this body mm -hmm. right so i know that living from my spirit creates a different dynamic in my perception of reality Right. Living in the spirit means that I am now cultivating my spiritual frequency. I'm, I'm on the road to channeling all of this energy and I'm meant to transform the energy. I'm meant to transform it into um, something that's going to generate energy within my spirit. It's going to genuinely uh, generate um, a higher level frequency, you know, so that looks like for me living in the mindset of becoming love. And when I went down that tunnel, become the purpose and didn't fit immediately. But as I studied, as I started meditating, I realized that my purpose is to become love because love is the generating energy of the universe, right? It really is. If you think about how we feel when we love another person, it becomes a self-sustaining energy that cannot be diminished. It only becomes greater. And when you add the love to somebody that loves you, you are now creating a, a compounding uh, energy frequency that, that really um, it's self-perpetuating. It, it continues on, you know, you, we feel love and we're like, oh, I'm king of the world or I can do anything, you know, it's and true. It's, it's true, you know? So when I looked at love, when I looked at the, the pure nature of love, not the worldly view of love with sex and, and, you know, physicalities and requirements and requests and transactional love for me, that was not it. You know, that was the world's view of love for me, the spiritual view of love means that you live within a balance within your life in every mannerism in every word that you speak in every action you take in every person that comes across your path you treat them as though they are a spiritual entity trying to go to the same place as i am which we all do we all end up dying we all are going to the same place why are we in competition with each other and that's something that i, I lived in i lived in a place of trying to compete with my neighbor trying to compete with this guy down the street trying to be the best of this it doesn't matter what matters is that we're all going to the same place. And so how can I now live in a mindset and perspective of allowing others to find that, that joy in life or, or feel the joy in life or feel what my truth is and my truth is love, right? So I started treating people differently. I had no prerequisites. I didn't need somebody to love me because now I was self-generating my own love for myself. I realized that I am a perfect being in this body right my spiritual essence my my consciousness is perfect in its, in its in its truth right it's just a pure energy so i had to take that and acknowledge that for myself and no longer hold my worldly views of myself you know hold my myself captive i can now free myself up into my energy body and say i am the embodiment of love you know and i now i want to treat others with that same love and respect that i have because it's so perpetuating within me i no longer needed that transactional love in my life i didn't need the physicalities in my life i only needed to love people and that that really became my purpose in this life is to generate love because as i do that now these small moments that i saw in my in my tunnel 
right? Now I'm, I'm acknowledging those in every instant. Now I go down the street and whether I come up to a cashier or I come up to some, some guy walking on the street, it doesn't matter. Those are small minuscule moments that create the entirety of the picture, right? And I can affect change so easily on those small little micro environments in people's life. I so. love that you said that because for everybody watching right now, I think that there's this misperception that when we are going to affect a change, we've got to do something big. It's got to be massive. And if it's not right. massive, it's not meaningful. And right. what I'm hearing you say is that it's the smallest, teeniest, tiniest interactions that cause a change that that means that Every single person watching has an equal chance to right. affect a change. Is that what I'm hearing from you? Yeah, that, that, that's how I see it now. Yeah, I see it that every small, every small moment um, creates the picture of the entire moment, much like the pixels in a TV. It's those small pictures, the individual colors in those small pixels that create the entirety of the, of the beautiful picture that you see on there, right? And that's what our life is. It's made up of not large scale moments, although they, they do um, affect us and we are able to draw energy from them. Really, it's the individual moments. And, and this is something that you know, I struggle with, with depression and stuff, looking back on all those big moments in my life where I felt I had failed, but not looking at all the small moments where I had achieved greatness, like in little things, like making somebody smile, making somebody feel acknowledged, making somebody feel loved. Those, those little moments, like literally are making somebody else's life and they're making my life better. You know? So it is, it is the very small moments that make the entirety of our life and our reality. I absolutely said- believe that. So you, sorry. So you said that you, you can't, you experience all of these little pixels, all of these little moments from your life. And then you came back and you had time to reflect on them. Right. So I would like you to share if you, if you're willing, some of the more profound moments that you were thinking about afterwards and, and share what some of those were, because I think that I want everybody to really understand what it means when we have these life reviews and how we're affecting people. Because you've shared some, some good things, but I'm sure that there were also some things that you looked at as not as positive or right. negative, however you want to put it. But mm. are you willing to share a couple of those? Yeah, absolutely. Ones? Absolutely. So, I mean, to, to go into that, I have to kind of speak as to where I lived and where I came from. Okay. You know, so I, I grew up in Southern California. And I grew up in the south side of San Diego. So it wasn't the most beautiful place. It wasn't near the beach. I mean, it was near the beaches, but I was not in the beach environment. I was really near um, the border, border town, right? So I lived really near the border. You could actually see the border from my school. You could see the fence. You could see Mexico and Tijuana. Um, But with that, it was also a very violent place. Um, as a junior in high school, I had one of my best friends get stabbed 72 times. His name is Poncho. Um, I had numerous crowbar. I've had a crowbar hit over my head. I've been shot at before. Um, I've got chain scars across my face. So it was a very, very violent environment, you know, and um, I remember as a kid in elementary school, probably fifth, sixth grade, maybe seventh grade, sixth grade, I was riding to school with my skateboard and I had somebody hit a, a, um, bar metal bar over my head and steal my skateboard for me and i remember in that moment i went from being this sweet gentle boy right into this person that acknowledged that now i have to protect myself at all costs and that meant forming a barrier around me that meant protecting my essence in my body and that meant that i had to become almost violent right i had to i had to fight my way out of certain situations which was totally against my nature and there were numerous times where I had been in fights, where I had hurt people uh, through my life. And um, really, this life review showed me that I needed to let go of that because my whole life was based upon that foundation of protecting yourself at all costs, even if it resorted to violence. And that really went against everything that I am. It really went against my entire spirit, my entire being. And um, so, you know, I, I remember there, there was numerous times where I got in a fight with somebody and I, in this uh, life review, and I saw, I saw the, the, the change that had happened on him. I saw the change that had happened on me. I saw the, 
the way that I felt in the moment, but also the way that I felt in that current moment of going down the tunnel, right? Because it, it shifted inside that tunnel because nothing could hurt me. Nothing was there. It was just, I felt the pure essence of who I was. I wasn't conflicted at anything. It was just, that's what I was. I was the purity of, of my life force, right? And I saw this looking at those pictures through my eyes and being in that body. And I thought, wow, like I have affected a negative change on this universe why like why did it have to be that way and now not only has it affected me because now that stays with me for the entirety of my life through memories right now it affects them you know and, and i thought that doesn't need to be that way it doesn't you know and there were a few other instances where i've, I've hurt people in the past you know and it just it really broke my heart to, to think about who i was and who i am now so and that really set me down the path of really trying to understand my nature and, and what I am and what I'm meant to be and what really resonates with life-giving energy and life-giving force in my life, you know, and it's, it was stepping outside of that, those boundaries and those confinements of, of this physical life of, of, you know, danger and protection where I could just strictly be myself. I could be myself. And in that there was enough power in there to sustain me and to, to protect me. Right. So, and, and, you know, it's stupid things like, you know, there's people like yelling, right. Yelling at somebody and having somebody yell at you. And like, wh what's the reason in that? Like, why do I even let things bother me? I mean, honestly, if we're in a discussion or there's a, an argument going on, what I'm doing is I'm allowing the power of their words affect a truth or an energy within me. And I'm now having to like protect that. And I'm yelling out words at them. And that doesn't make any sense to me. Because I have to assign an energy power to those words. And all I have to do is filter it out and filter out maybe what they're saying is they're, they're in a hard situation and they don't know how to get out of it. And that's why they're, they're struggling or that's why they're frustrated. That's why they're dealing with anxiety or whatever. There's, there's many situations that we don't have to respond the way that we respond. You know, and I really saw that in the life review. I really saw that, you know, especially afterwards. I went down this whole meditative path right afterwards when I was recovering and, and, and recovering from the motorcycle accident, I spent months just thinking about, okay, what am I going to do? You know, how am I going to change my life? How, how has this impact me? You know, and it really, it, it shifted how I speak and how I live and how I, how I live in this world. Wow. I think that one of the things that happens when we have incidents in our lives and we reflect on them later as we grow and as we evolve I think sometimes we look back on some of those and we have regrets and we think, oh, I wish fill in the blank. Right. And one of the things that I've always said is that if somebody gave me a magic wand and asked if I could change anything, my answer is always the same. I wouldn't change anything because otherwise I wouldn't be here right now. And I like, right. if you like who you are, you have to have all of those experiences to make you who you are. But I'm curious in your life review, as you have these thoughts, I'm sure in some of these instances where there's probably some things that you reviewed that you're, you knew sure. if I could have done something differently, are you able to even see how things could have been different also? Um, I saw different paths, I think, but I didn't see where I would end up. You know, I saw di different, um, different circumstances and how it would have changed slightly. Like what? Never, Can you give an example? Um, just like maybe instead of being horrible to somebody, maybe being nice to somebody, right? But really the reality is, is that all of those little moments create who we are. So for me to go back and want to change something, like it's impossible, right? It's completely impossible. So it's hard for me to even entertain thoughts of that. Because to do that means I would have to forget everything that I am about myself. And now my path would be entirely different because that, that one small change will affect the entirety of what it is, right? It won't just stay that one little change and then you're going to go back to the same path that you're on. It doesn't work that way. Once you make one small incremental change, you've changed now everything about where you're going and who you're becoming, right? So although I regret the pain, I think that I, you know, I caused people to change. That means that I am now taking away something that maybe was meant to change them too. Right. And it's, it's not a, it, it's hard to understand that viewpoint. It's hard to like really comprehend it, 
I mean, because I love people. I love everybody, you know, I really do. And I never want to inflict anything um, that would harm them or make them feel belittled or anything, you know, and that's something that I, I've done in the past, you know, and it's not something I'm proud of, but it's definitely something that I acknowledge now. And I hope, I hope that in those moments, they were able to draw something positive out of that experience. Maybe it wasn't to hang out with Jeremiah anymore. Which, <laughs> and maybe that's the good thing. And maybe that, that's the blessing for them. I don't know. You know, but honestly, to, to want to change anything in your life is almost, it, it's, it's like, it's depression. It's really depression because you're wanting to change something that you regret doing, but yet what you regretted doing has brought you into this beautiful place now. Right. And, and I did that with my depression as I tried to change the past in my mind. And it was so ridiculous that I could, I couldn't change it, that it would affect me physically in this present moment. Right. And that created a, a way of thinking that wasn't conducive to growth. It was actually preventing me from growing and becoming what I'm meant to be. What I could do though, is look at those instances in those moments and say, okay, that's where I would have liked to change in the past. Maybe I change it in the present now in every future occurrence that comes to me. Maybe I make those decisions because for me, you know, looking at the, the truth of, of the experiences is that those experiences really last for just a small minuscule moment, right? They, they, in the entirety of our life and our lifespan, right? They last for just one, one small moment, but the information is really what travels with us. The energy travels with us from the memories of that information. So the information now that it's maintained within my body lasts forever. And now I can pass that information on to other people too. So, you know, I can say, Hey, listen, when someone's reacting this way, maybe you could react this way. And that changes their life or maybe their positioning, you know? So the experience really is the value there. It, it really is. It's not the experience itself. It's, it's the information from the experience. Right. And that carries on with as long as we carry breath and it gets exponentially better because we're able to pass that experience out to other people as well, like free, like free pamphlets of how to live a better life, you know, yeah. and, and we can implement that in our everyday interactions. You said something to me that I thought was so profound. Um, and that was that when you were fixated on the past and what you could change in the past, that's depression. Yeah. When you're fixated on what you want to control in the future, that's anxiety. Right. And love is the place that you are in the and present. Love moment. is the place that you are. Love is. I mean, that that really is the place. The place that we are, the life force that is within us. I mean, think about love. Love is nothing more than balance, right? Nothing is more than, than feeling accepted, feeling feeling acknowledged. You know, and you look at plant life out there, right? How plants grow. How do they grow? They grow by being in balance with nature. Right. They grow by having the nutrients they need, having the, the O2 that they can convert to oxygen, having the sunlight. So when all those things are in perfect harmony, the life force is growing in them. Right. And that's how we feel when we're in love. It's the balance. It's the nurturing. It's the acknowledgement, you know, and all those things create the love and the love is what creates the energy and it creates a powerful energy. Right. Right. But yeah, so that that really is what we're living in. We are. I like to call we call it life. Right. But I like to call it love. We are living the experience of love and life happens in those small moments, right? The small experiences is life, but right. the entirety of our existence is occurring within the confines of love. And it's yeah. how much yeah. do we want to accept the love? How much do we want to accept love from other people? How much do we want to accept love from, from the universe? We look out, we see these trees. How much do we want to love that? How much do we want to love the sunsets on the beach? How much do we want to love, you know, whatever it is, you know, well, I think it's easy to love those good things that you're talking about, but I think the challenge for a lot of people is finding a way to love those things that we don't perceive right. as good as, you know, things that we just have to be, we have to deal with because we're human. Yeah. Yeah. But every, everything is just an experience, right? Everything is an experience, whether it's good or bad, whether our perception of the good is good or bad. Well, and that's the, per, that's the operative word, the perception right. of it. So I think right. one of the things that you talked about last time a little bit, you could touch on it again, is I think this is really important for people to understand is that you had anxiety and you had depression. And when you yes. realize that it was based on the fear and um, the fear of the future and trying to change the past, that the only thing you could affect was right now, no. you realize that you could change your thoughts and going forward, do you have depression and anxiety anymore? No, I don't. And why? Because you have a different perception, right? Right. right. On I, how I, you I, think of things. I live in this moment. I live in each individual moment now. I don't, I don't live in, I'm going to try to become this in the future. 
or I'm going to, you know, try to project my, my hope for something else. I just know that right now I can be all that I am right now. I can be everything that I want to become right now within my own embodiment, with my own acknowledgement of myself. You know, I, I don't have to try to be anything for tomorrow because if I continue doing this pattern today, guess what? It's going to bring me into tomorrow. You know, if I, it's like breathing, you know, I don't have to think about breathing tomorrow. I just have to know that I just have to do it right now. Right. I can, <laughs> <It's true. laughs> and, I, and then, then the next moment it's right now again, and then here I am doing it again. And I, if I just keep doing that, I'm going to be alive, right. I'm going to maintain right. that. And it's the same thing with our perception of this life. If we can continue perceiving it as being good, right. It's only our perception of things that are coming in. There is no bad in life. The bad comes from the perception of what the experience is. But if you look at everything as giving you information and knowledge and wisdom, there's no bad then. There's only goodness to help sustain your life for the long term. And we don't have to look at the long term. We can just know that if we change our perception into accepting everything that is and knowing that it's meant to happen the way that it has happened, we cannot control outside forces. We can only control our perception of things. And as long as we can control the perception of what's happening on a daily basis, we're changing the world. Like we're changing the world in how we perceive people, how we're interacting with people, how we're sharing our energy with them, how they're perceiving energy coming into their lives. We're actually changing the world in small, minuscule ways, you know? So I think what I'm really hearing you say is that things happen for a reason and that everything has unfolded perfectly. Perfectly. That's Perfect. a real, now I get that, but I've been you know, I've been working on this for a really long time, but I think for a lot of people watching that, that may be a very challenging concept to understand. So can you elaborate a little bit more about why you believe everything is unfolding perfectly? Um, for one, because we cannot control outside forces, right? Okay. We cannot control those outside forces. So because of that, you can look at outside forces as two things, positive or negative. Right. Fear now, or love. Right? Fear or love. Fear or love. So if you look at them as a negative experience, what you're doing is now you are you are on the defensive. You are trying to protect yourself. You're trying to protect your being. You're trying to protect everything that you perceive to be negative. Right. And that puts you at a disadvantage because you're not able to to have forward momentum in your change in your life. Right. You're just sitting there in that moment, defending yourself from everything that's happening. Then you're stirring up energies of protection and, and negativity and and thinking all the things that could possibly go wrong are going wrong. And this is why. Right. But it's not that way. I mean, who, who's to say that 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 moment of a perceived negativity in your life is not going to substantially change the outcome or pattern two weeks from now? Right. Who is to say that this isn't the defining factor in your life for creating the greatest version of yourself? Right. Mm -hmm. So if everything is happening to you, right, it seems like we're on the defensive when it's happening to us. And for me, I've come up with this, this philosophy or whatever is that nothing happens to us. It happens for us. Right. Because it's helping us grow. It's helping us intake knowledge. So if it's happening for us, now we're on the offensive because now we can utilize that information. Now we can utilize that energy to propel ourselves forward. If it's happening to us, we're having to defend against it. We're like, oh, this is such a negative experience and I don't want to deal with this anymore. And you go into you go into shutdown mode almost. I know I used to, you know, but when it happens for you, you can utilize that to project yourself or to propel yourself forward. Um, and really, because we cannot change anything other than our perception right that's really all we can change so people coming into our life we don't control what comes into our life we don't know that that's not meant to be because it is i mean it is meant to be it's happening the reality is that it is happening now we as humans try to go through every available scenario because that's how our brains work right they're, they're meant to almost be in the fight or flight mentality all the, all the time because we're trying to protect the body our, our egotistical mind is trying to protect our body and protect our spirit and, and energy so when, when we do that, when we go into that protection mode, we're not doing anything positive. So, yeah, I mean, just, just acknowledging that everything that's happening outside of your force is literally meant to happen because it is happening. There's no controlling it. It's, it's happening. So it's meant to happen. And just letting go of the, of the control factors that was a huge thing for me, too. So were you able to see from the perspective of your life review where things had happened very purposefully, like like very meant to be because a lot of people will say everything happens for a reason and some people are like no nothing happens for a reason mm -hmm. or only a few things and we talk about free will and all those things meld together 
what from your life review is your perception of that? My perception is that everything happens for a reason. Okay. Everything happens. I'm with, I'm with you there. I really am. Everything happens for me and everything is giving me um, the nece uh, necessary tools to better my life. Everything that comes at me, I am giving information, right? Because everything in this world, everything in this existence is energy and information. That's all there is. It's, there's no tables. There's no, I mean, we, we see them as tables. We call them tables, but they're not. They're actually on the, on the smallest level there. It's energy and information. So everything coming at you is giving you information, right? Now it's what you want to do with that information. What are you going to do with it? Are you going to tuck it away in a dark place and say that was negative and I don't want to deal with that anymore? Or are you going to look at it and say this this can help propel me in the future? This can help get me out of a sticky sticky situation later. You know, there there is no happenstance. It, it's literally coming into our life to help promote the growth of our spirit and our understanding. And as we take that information, the perceived negative, and we turn that into a positive, right? And we can do that by just acknowledging that it's information, that the information sticks with us forever. And that information sticking with us forever can help make us a better person in the future. So just by that fact, we can see that there's no bad. There's no negative. There's only positive because information at its core is giving us tools to build ourselves a better life. Wow. Okay. So everything's happening for us. Things are happening for a reason. Did you have any sense of planning this life before you were born into the life, you know, when you were a soul? So like before I was born, did yeah, I? Did you, when you were there having your life review, did you have any knowledge about how the life was prepared or what it was or that you had done something to kind of pick your circumstances for this life it's funny um so i don't tell the story very much but i'm gonna tell you tell you the story when i was a kid one of the first memories i have was a pre-birth memory and really okay yeah. i really want to hear about this yep so i remember my mom asking me when i was maybe five, six years old, if I remembered before I was a baby, right? She, she asked me that. And I remember I thought about it for a minute. I thought, yeah, I do. And she says, well, well, what do you remember? And I said, you know, it was warm and I was floating. And I remember feeling happy. And she's like, whoa, like, this is really crazy. And she said, what were you doing? And I said, I was playing checkers with Jesus. And she's like, what? Like, that's crazy, right? <laughs> at this point in time, did you have a reference at five of who Jesus was? Not fully. I don't think I fully did. I, I heard stories about it in, you know, church and whatnot, but it didn't, I didn't fully understand it. Um, and now looking back, right, after this NDE, I started thinking about that because I, I went back to my earliest memories to try to understand who I was. And I really believe that that perception of me playing checkers, right, with what was perceived to be, you know, God's son or, you know, was almost, in fact, me being present for the planning of my life, the, the strategy behind it all. And what was happening, like we checkers for me was a game of strategy and trying to outmove and outwit things. Sure. And I think that's what it was. And honestly, I think there is something to that. I think there is something to our spirits knowing what's going to happen to us. And I think that's, I mean, we're, we're all connected, I believe, to this energy field, right? Um, if we're energy and we're information and there's energy and information in these fields, which scientists have already proven, you know, we are connected to this, this oneness, this source energy. Right. And I think just by that fact alone, we are kind of acknowledging what is going to happen or what could possibly happen or what is happening. You know, it's all happening within one, one time frame, right. Everything, the entirety of life, um, you know, but I think there is some sort of planning that goes ahead or there is some sort of acknowledgement of what life you're going to lead. Um, I just have this weird feeling about that. You know, that it's always, it's always, I've always known what I was going to go through. And it's weird because I have these deja vu moments, you know, and this, 
I tell people all the time since my NDE, I have these moments where I'm like, it's just weird that this is just now happening because it feels like it should have already happened or it feels like it's something's not right here. There's something to skew, you know, and I really think that that may be little, little glimpses of maybe a, gl- I already, a glitch in the matrix, a glitch, glitch in the matrix. Yeah. Like maybe I already knew what was going to happen to me. I don't know, you know, but um, it's, it's a beautiful thought to know that I had gone into this prepared and that, you know, as I go through this life, I'm starting to unlock knowledge or I'm starting to unlock information that really is relevant to who I am on my soul level, you know, and now I've reached this place where, okay, you can just become yourself and become your soul and live in this environment and see how it, how it, how it, how it goes. Good luck, yeah. you know, and see how it goes and let's see how beautiful it can be, you know? Yeah. yeah. I think okay. there is something to it. In the beginning of our conversation, you said, in your life review, you realize the minusculeness yeah. of this life. And I've referred a lot of times to this life as being a game. And I've also been on the other side, not in a near-death experience, but I've, I've talked about being on the other side. And one of the things that I was shown as I was coming back into my body is the power that we are on a soul level is so much greater than what we are when we're in our humanness, that it felt like a cosmic joke. It felt like this was a teeny tiny, simple, simple, simple game that we on a soul that are so powerful come here to do, but to us on a soul level, this is nothing, but while we're here, holy cow, like this is important. All these things happen to us that are significant. There's pain, there's loss, there's trauma. There are all these things. And I do not want to diminish what people go through and the pain that they go through in all of this. But I also was shown that this was a simple game. So will you now elaborate on those thoughts from earlier? So, I mean, it is a simple game, I think. I mean, it, we're, we're, we're faced with two decisions. If you look at everything and you, you can break it down to two decisions, okay? Is it positive or is it negative? Is right? it fear? Is it love? Is it fear? Is it love, right? So I really, like I said earlier, that we literally come into this as a spirit inhabiting a body, right? And when we're first born, our body doesn't know how to, it doesn't understand itself. It doesn't acknowledge itself yet, right? It just knows to sustain the body. And I realized that with everything being information and energy, right? That we can take, we were taking all of this stuff and we're just really, we're, we're, we're channeling it, we're changing it and we're creating a different frequency, which I believe is our spirit, right? So our spirit is an energy and it's information. And I think really the game is, is that we're meant to transform the, the fundamental frequency of our spirit. And as we do that, we're compounding it and we're growing this spirit and this energy and this frequency into something that's larger than life almost, you know, and, and we talk about people's auras and stuff, you know, and how their energies are even outside of their body. Right. And I think there's a way to grow that. I think there's a way to make it greater. And I think that's really ultimately what we're doing is, we, again, we go from a, a transition, right? We go from the, the body and the spirit inhabiting the same place, right? And the non-acknowledgement of it. And then all these inputs come into it. And then at the very end of our life, we go back into that spiritual body. Now, what happens in between is information gathering and um, energy transformation, right? And I think when we find that when we want to live life, we have positive experiences. So we're creating and generating positive frequencies and higher level energies. And when we're having negative energies or, or negative experiences, we're diminishing that frequency. We're diminishing our actual life, right? And even physically, you know, when we have positive experiences, we're releasing endorphins and stuff. They're actually benefiting us. We're at a, at a different brain wavelength, length, right? Our, our heart is beating at a different pattern. So we're actually in a healing pattern when we're having positive experiences. When we're having negative experiences, we're releasing, you know, uh, chemicals that are actually killing us, right? It's actually killing us. You know, and when you look at that in that very simplistic fact, right, the scientifically proven fact that everything that is good generates life, everything that's bad generates death, right? So I think that's what we're doing is we're trying to uh, take in this stuff and transform. We're meant to transform every experience into a positive one. We're meant to experience everything that we have into a life-giving energy force and field that we can pass out for other people. And then they also utilize that life force that you've given them to help propel their lives forward and help change their spirit and their frequency, I believe. 
Wow. So a lot of people I feel like that watch near-death experience interviews do so because they have experienced a loss and they're right. looking for that connection. You have had three of them now yeah. and you're still here. Yeah. Do you think that people plan exit points before they come here? And do you think it's possible for somebody to actually die before it's their time? I don't think anybody dies before their time. I don't. I think you die right when you're meant to die. And I, and that's one thing we don't have control over. So if we don't have control over and it's a universal truth that it happens, then when it happens cannot be by determined by us. Right. Well, I think a lot of people suffer from when they're in a situation with a death. Sometimes they think, oh, I should have done this. I could have done this. I shouldn't have said this. This all, you know, they try to yeah. affect what happened and, and wish that they could take things back. And I think a lot of times they'll punish themselves or have negative sure. self-talk around that. Sure. And I think it's very healing for people to hear that no one dies before their time, because that means that you couldn't have done anything to stop it. Because if it wasn't their time, I think like you would have had a near death experience and you'd be back. Right. Well, and then, and even when you think on that, that, that foundation, you're, you're trying to implement change upon one static event, right? But the truth of it is that it's not that one static event that has caused a death, but everything leading up to it, all the minuscule events. So there's no way to actually change the outcome of anything, right? What happens is meant to happen in every regard, right? So and it's also, and this is going to sound harsh, but it's also selfish, right? Because for me, going to the other side, I know that there's a better place there. And to ever want to hold somebody back from experiencing the truth of their existence in who they are is, is it's hard for me to contemplate that. It's hard for me to understand that because this life, although we think of it as being beautiful, which it is and, and amazing, um, the next life, let me tell you, it's a little bit better than this, like a lot better than this, actually. <laughs> you know what I mean? But also, and all you're doing is delaying the inevitable, right? It's going to happen. It literally is going to happen to every single one of us. So to delay one moment only to have it reoccur in a different moment, I don't know. I, I can't wrap my head around that. I think knowing and appreciating the experience that we had and the time that we had with the person that's passed on is the greatest gift that we can give ourselves and to them. Because I do believe 100%, okay, if we are nothing but consciousness and energy, right, that their spirits, their consciousness, and their energy still reside here. They are still here. Absolutely. That's why we have ghosts. Everything is energy and consciousness in our minds. When we think about thoughts, all that information goes down neural pathways on neurons and happens in synapses and synapses and neurons are energy, right? So our consciousness is attached to energy. Energy can never be diminished. Energy can only transfer. We are transferring the energy out of this body into a new body, which is the energy body. And what we're doing is we're transforming that energy to create the strong energetic spirit that we're meant to be for the next realm, right? right. And there's consciousness that goes on even after you die. Right. I, I've heard many stories of people that have had near-death experience and, and come back and they were aware. I was aware. Okay. They are aware of what's going on. They are here. They have not left. They've left this physical body. You can still communicate with them. You can still live life through them and with them. They are still inhabiting the areas and spaces within your mind and within your life. That's, that's not just some spiritual talk. That's like legitimate reality, reality. They are here. They have not left. They are yeah. still here. You know, I really believe that. I, that's what I, I'm I seeing. mean, you know, I've had lots of experiences yeah, yeah, yeah. because I believe that when we think about our loved ones at the moment, we think about them, they are absolutely with us because they're not limited by these, but it's hard to imagine unless you've been on the other side, the expansiveness and the power that you have on a soul level, yeah. but our expansion is so great that they can be with multiple people at the same time. Right. 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 Yeah. They, they can be all over the place. I mean, they're, they're literally, Every, they're everywhere, really everywhere yeah. and nowhere. Like all of, they, all of it. Exactly. That's exactly all, what of, it it. all yeah. of it. So do you believe that we come back again? Do you believe in reincarnation? I think that much like lessons learned over and over and over again, I think there is something to be said. I don't know for a fact, and I can't speak to this actually, but I feel that there are 
there are moments. I mean, everything is, is cyclical, right? Everything is a cycle, right? And I think there is something to be said about coming back, the energy inhabiting the earth and creating new life forces and life forms. Um, I think there's a possibility. I, I think that's the reason that we're in this um, gathering of information, though, is that we can elevate ourselves or elevate our spirit or our consciousness to a place where we don't have to keep coming back. And I think coming back is allowing us another chance to create a new cycle or a new start or a new um, um, spiritual level. Right. And I think if we can, I think there is a point to where we can get to the, where we elevate ourselves so high that where our frequency is resonating so high that it no longer fits on this realm. And I think we go to a different dimension. I think is we go that to the purpose. Do you think that that's why we come here so that we can elevate our soul in a way that we couldn't by not being here? I think so. I, I absolutely think so. Because to be here, you have to be a lower level frequency, right? And if we're changing our frequency fundamentally by that fact, we are changing our energy for what? What is the point? Why are we going someplace else afterwards? And we're, how do we get there? How do we get to that different level? Even with the light spectrum, there's different levels of light spectrum. Mm-hmm. You know? And I think that's what we're doing is we're changing and we're meant to take these lessons and utilize them to change our spirit or our awareness or understanding of them, which in part, what that does is it changes the frequency and that frequency and being energy and our consciousness being energy and information. What we're doing is we're allowing that to grow and change and become a higher frequency, which no longer will resonate with, with in this, this world. And I absolutely believe sense. it. hundred percent. So you've talked about frequency a lot in energy. And we talked about how your interactions with each person creates a frequency and an energy to, to them. So I say something, it's an exchange, the energy exchanges, but the words exchange. So what happens when we're sitting in our house by ourselves and we're thinking thoughts about other people, positive thoughts, negative thoughts? What did you see, if anything, in your life review about what that does? Did you see any of that? So we're living within an energy field. Okay. That's already been proven too. Okay. So now if we're... Um, if we're creating or generating thoughts, right. And we also emit light photons. We emit energy, right. We already know that too. That's a fact. So through our thoughts, we're emitting energy, right? When we think negative thoughts to somebody, they are getting it even on a subconscious level, right? Cause we're, we're within the field. We're not standing outside of the field and it's not a different part of us. We are within the energy field and we are functioning within the energy field, right? That's, this is all proven. This is all science, right? So when we think stuff, we're emitting negative energy into the energy field and we're attaching it to somebody's frequency or somebody else's energy. That's actually affecting them. It's absolutely affecting them. It's, it's the same way manifestation works, right? We're, we're tapping into the energy field to, to create an uh, uh, energy magnetism, basically, that's drawing different energies to us, right? So I think it, it works both ways with positivity as well. When we sit here and manifest positivity for other people's life, it definitely affects their energy or their field. And I think all we're doing when we're doing negative and we're having negative thoughts, we're just really diminishing a person's spirit, you know, and what greater failure have we made than to like stop somebody from, from generating power in their life or not helping them ascertain the energy or frequency in order to get to the next realm. I mean, it's so detrimental, I believe, not only to this world and how they they accept the energy, right? But I think it's also detrimental to their process in, in transforming into the next level, you know? And I think that we should really be cognizant as to how we talk about people, how we think about people, you know? Ultimately, we don't have to think negatively about anybody. Everybody is just doing their own journey. Everyone's on their own journey. They're on, they're on their own life path. They've had so many different experiences than, than we've had. Like, how, who are we to judge them? Like their belief system came from a whole series of events, small and large, that we have no understanding of, right? So why are we sitting here judgment in judgment from our perspective when our road and our path is not even close to their path? Why not be and let be? Why not love and let love? Why not just accept people for who they are and what they what they've become and and know? Because when we open people's hearts when we love them completely it tears down walls it it creates it creates this crazy vortex of love and energy and life within them you know i mean we we can do anything in life if you can do anything then do everything you can to help people live 
help people love, help people transition into the next life. Like that's, that's what we're here for. You know, you mentioned judgment. Let's, let's go there a little bit because I think it's very natural in our lives. I think we're almost trained from a very young age to make judgments. It's it's kind of how we assess the world, but judgments actually can have a negative effect on our own energy. So I would ask you like, what did you do after coming back from your NDE to help change how you judge? Because it's, I think it's what a lot of people struggle with. Yeah. Um, I mean, I can't judge anymore. I mean, who am I to judge? Right. So again, the, the uniqueness of our individual lives, right. When you realize the uniqueness of one's journey and one's path, you can't make any judgments whatsoever because that path was so beautiful and so important to them. They're even maybe on a different stage or different level, right? Their, their path, your paths have crossed in one moment of time, right? But how they've gotten there has been completely unique and different, right? What they believe in comes from a long list of occurrences and events in their life. So who are you to say, hey, all of your truths are wrong. Everything that you've experienced in life is wrong like how ignorant and arrogant is that you know what i mean so i think it's for me it was just really understanding that we're on different levels in our journey and we're on different paths and our paths from the past have have contained different nuances and different occurrences and just accepting people for who they are and and loving them for who they are really is the greatest thing that you can do for anybody it really is because it helps them see a different side of it. But I mean, I, I can't judge anymore. I used to judge all the time. I was horrible at it. You know, I, I if someone didn't believe what I believed, I just, I didn't, you know, I didn't want to agree with them, whether it was politics, whether it was just whatever it was, you know, and, you know, I had to really get out of my mind with a lot of things. I'm no longer involved in politics. I don't believe in politics anymore. I think politics are inherently used to separate and divide us. And and for me, that goes against every reasoning in my soul and what it's meant to be. You know, I, I, religious religion, same thing. You know, if you're a different religion, I used to think, well, you're not going to heaven or you're not going to do this. I'm like, how arrogant of me to think that I know all of the truths in this existence that's ludicrous, honestly. So who goes who goes to heaven? Man, I think we all go to heaven. <laughs> I really <laughs> do. do. I mean, I think we, we all go to to our certain level of heaven. I think there's just different maybe levels or layers. And I mean, honestly, I mean, we're if if heaven is the energy realm, right? Which maybe it is, maybe it's not. I mean, that, that's kind of what I perceived it to be you know, is this beautiful energy in this consciousness. And, and it, it's like, oh, you want to hear something crazy? Check this out. Of course I do. Okay. Check this out. What if, okay. If you look at our own lives, right. And what we're doing is we're intaking information and we have all this information around us. And now we became consciously aware of it. What if our perception of God is really, if everything in the existence of everything is information and energy what if god is the conscious awareness of the energy and information throughout the entire uh, existence right so it could be everything and that would mean that we are living within the information and knowledge of god or what we perceive to be god i think it's if like they were talking about um i saw a few studies where they think that black matter is actually information right so everywhere that you look in the in the universe there's um, which is the majority of the universe, like 96%, I think is black right, matter, right? Right. right. percent is matter that we can see yeah. and perceive. And, and so our, our spirit is nothing more than the conscious awareness of energy and, and information. So I wonder, I always th- I, I thought about that uh, last week. Like, what if God is just this whole collection of information and energy and, and it's self-aware, right? So you didn't see God in your near-death experience, but you did say that you could feel that being and the being said. Right. To become the become purpose, the purpose. To become the purpose. Was that being God? Maybe. I think honestly, I think we have God within all of us. I think we are part God, right? I think we have that energy. We have some small, minuscule part of that, and we all create a whole. If we're all part of one, we're all part of Source. I think we are all part of that. And almost, this is how I see it. And this is really weird, right? But I look at it almost as um, like, if you think about your brain, right? You could think about all the negative thoughts and all the positive thoughts. 
I think what we are, those collection of thoughts basically within, within the, the body of, of God or, or the source or whatever you want to call it. I think we all have the ability to think independently and different, but we all are connected somehow in this giant scheme of oneness or energy. And we're all connected to this energy somehow. I don't know. I mean, it just seems that way, you know, it could, it could be something weird like that, or it could be something different. I don't know, you know, but it just seems like we're all kind of individualized, but we're also part of one big thing. Right. So just like life, we can choose to do anything and have any experience we want. You know, that's beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Wow. Well, you've given everybody an awful lot to think about. I so greatly appreciate what you've shared with us today. Do you have any last final thoughts that you want everybody to know? Um, if I could share something with people, it's, it's really realizing how beautiful and perfect you are in, in your life and understanding that nothing has happened to you. It's happened for you. And to harness that power of love and to harness that power of perfection within your own life and to utilize that to impact other people is really the most beautiful thing that you can do. You know, allowing your spirit to live free of this body and to live the free in the light and the, the, the energy that you are and transferring that to other people and giving them hope, whether it's loving relationships, whether it's giving a hand out to somebody, whether it's just encouraging and uplifting somebody. I think that's really what we can do to help change this world. And right now the world's in such disarray and we're in this, this changing process right now. And people are starting to awaken, you know, and I think the more that people start to awaken, the more we're going to realize that love really is the only thing that is acceptable in this planet. Love is the only thing that really has the power to transform darkness into light, you know, and that's exactly what we're doing is we're transferring this energy into light and that light is creating a, 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 um, a pathway for other people, you know, so become the purpose, become the love, become the sustainability in your life, you know, and just give all that you can to everyone else and not expect anything back because what you need to sustain your own life is already within you. So. Wow. Well, thank you so much for sharing all of your thoughts. And I really, really appreciate you. I appreciate you too. Thank you so much for having me on here. I really appreciate it so much.